Hi, my name is Amazing from Origin, and this is my basic champion guide to Xin Zhao. Xin Zhao is a champion that excels at solo queue most of the pre med opportunities in situations because, that, because of his kid. His kid doesn't allow him to be the smartest, the smartest of gankers, the smartest of invade champions, but he rather has to rely on brute force. So solo queue is the opportunity for him to shine in, and he wants to um, find gank paths where he knows he has a pink board down, so he can just go through the pink board in order to ensure that the gang is going to work out. He doesn't want to waste a lot of time, he just wants to brute force and make things quick. Xin Zhao excels at two things, early game ganken as well as early to mid game dueling. In both cases, he wants to have an impact on the map really early on, uh, read his lanes well and see what he can do. As I said before, the brute force part about him is pretty big, so he cannot just rely on the enemy to um, to basically just play the name normally and everything like that and play, and he's able to punish that. But he rather has to wait for mistakes to happen, and these mistakes is something uh, are, are things that Zinzao is able to punish really, really strongly. So he has to wait for opportunities where these mistakes happen. Um, he doesn't want to get, become a team fighter he rather wants to win the game before that actually happens because his kit doesn't allow him to be the strongest of team fighters because he, he can be easily kited after his initial is down and there's no peer that he can provide technically um it's it's only his r which is kind of a weaker version of his r so um he he cannot insect he cannot be the main engage tool but he rather someone that is following up in late game team fight Xin Zhao wants to be the aggressor at any point of the early game, which is basically his his main focus. He wants to be playing aggressively on top of the enemy jungle if he wins the matchup 1v1. He never wants to be sitting back and farming because he's not that good at farming, so therefore the enemy jungle is probably going to get an advantage and is able to snowball that into a lead. Xin Zhao has to make sure that his lanes are covered early and he can make plays on them. He shouldn't never give the enemy the first play, but rather be the one that does the first play, unless it's a counter gank opportunity, where he should be 100% sure of what the enemy jungle is going to do and able to counter that. Xin Zhao greatly snowboards as he kills the enemy jungler once because at that point he's able to get a nice level advantage and utilize that to do more damage to the enemy. So every time he invades afterwards, he will probably have wards coming in and he's able to read the enemy jungle more easily. So he has to look for a lot of opportunities or every opportunity for that matter in order to exceed in the early game, which is his strength. With Xin Zhao, you kind of want to have brute force as I already mentioned. So you want to you want to have the enemy overextend in order to do the most damage. It's not a situation where, with for example, Lee Sin, where you can ward W over the Drake pit and then make a sneaky gank happen. But with Xin Zhao, you have to walk around or walk right through the uh, right through the river. So I, in an ideal situation, what you want to look for is to have a top or mid lane pushing for the enemy so he can sneak up behind them walk, or walk behind them and basically be in auto attack range before you use the E. So you want to auto attack Q and as soon as the enemy uses the gap closer or flashes you want to follow up with the E and if the three talent strikes still didn't proc and the knock up didn't proc yet it's going to fo follow you to the E. So you basically uh, bait the enemy team in flashing away or dashing away and then use the gap close in order to ensure that he's going to be knocked up again and therefore killed in most situations. Um, I think if Xin Zhao is ever able to get a 3 talent strike completely on the enemy without him flashing, he's going to be dead regardless of what's up. So you want to look for the level 3, level 4 opportunities because this is when Xin Zhao excels the most out of any jungle because his Q damage is insane and really gives him uh, abilities that probably only the likes of Elise and maybe Lee Sin can ma match. The role of Xin Zhao in the mid game or mid to late game team fighting is to be a secondary initiator or someone that is more of a disruptor to be fair. It's not a strength to team fight but you can still do it if you time it right and you have the right moments to kind of use your spells. It shouldn't be uh, a black and white scenario where you just think, okay, since all does damage, so I have to E on the back line and I have to knock them up in order to lock them down. This is not always the case. You want to look for opportunities where you can split the front and the back line or cause as much destruction as, as possible between them. So maybe similar to a Lee Sin, but not quite as efficient as Lee Sin is able to do it. Um, you basically want to E on the front line and maybe ult, ult them away, ult them away from your back line or ult the back line from, uh, away from the front line so they're going to disrupt it and split. These are the opportunities they can look for. But in most cases, I think a basic combo on the front line and waiting for a right opportunity to basically use your ultimate is something you should you should look out for. And just to give your, your back line ability to kill the enemy front line before they kill you. Um, if you're behind, however, 
I think Zinzar becomes really, really less of a threat and he probably the most vulnerable out of any jungle champion that is kind of popular right now uh, to be CC'd and locked down in teamfights because his ability in teamfights basically relies on him being able to stay alive and it's a kind of a tank tank kind of approach but even champions like Lee Sin become late game tanks are able to use their mobility and get in, uh, get in and outside of teamfight where Sin Zhao is really um, singular in what he can do and one dimension in what he can do because it, once he's committed to a teamfight he cannot escape and he has to use as many spells as possible uh, um, throughout the teamfight in order to ensure that A he uses CC to the right amount and B, he's ensuring that he gets a lot of people with those ultimate to kind of um, give him the ability to sustain through a team fight. So he's not the ideal team fighter, but if he wants to do it, look for opportunities to be a disruptor and be smart about it. That's basically it. E into old flash, which is something you can think about and functions similar to how the Lee Sin ultimate flash works, but it's a lot more situational. And it's probably more gonna be used for um, situation where you wanna separate the front and back line instead of um, kicking someone out of position, a, a backline champion out of position like an Oriana or whatever it is, which Lee Sin is able to do, but Zin Zhao less likely to be able to do because his ultimate is less targeted and therefore less proficient at singling out targets, but rather to be more disruptive by themselves. For Marks, you want to use CD. For Seals, you want to use Flat Armor. For the Blues, you want to use Flat, CDR, Plus. And for Quins, you want to use Attack Speed. This setup basically ensures that you have the best early game dueling, as well as the highest amount of clear speed that you can have in any kind of setup. Variations to it, where you can use MR or CDR per level in the Blues. But in most cases, these are less efficient than going for the Flat CDR, in order to ensure that in the early game, you're going to have the most damage output, as well as the most amount of pressure on the map. For the mass freeze on Zin Zhao, you want to go for 12 or 18, uh, simply to ensure that you're going to get the strength of the Aegis, which is, in my opinion, the strongest jungle mastery in the game right now. In the Ferocity Tree, obviously, attack speed is pretty interesting, um, as well as the increased damage, um, like the double-edged sword that kind of uh, gives you nice in the early game especially, as well as Vampirism and the Oppressor. Oppressor is a mastery that some people may overlook because Bounty Hunter just seems something that Maybe in solo queue sh should be more attractive, but Oppressor always will give you more damage as soon as you E, Q, or rep by someone. So therefore, it's the mastery to go with um, half Keystone to go with technically. In the defensive tree, we obviously have the health reach, recovery mastery coming in, tough skin, just so you can sustain better through the jungle in order to ensure that you're gonna have good clear and safe clear, as well as t veteran scars kind of help you out in the early game and give you a nice little HP boost in order to fight the enemy jungler maybe even. And down the line you have insight and afterwards you can decide if you want to go for swiftness which case basically gives you tenacity and slow resist or you want to go for the legendary guardian mastery. This is kind of disputable but in my opinion in most cases as someone that is melee and has to get to the enemy in order to do damage being slow is the worst thing that can happen to you. So you want to cut down on the Z and rather go for the swiftness mastery and to ensure that you can always uh, do what you want to do. For skill order and level 1, you want to get either Q or W. Uh, it depends if you have a solo start, in which case you should probably opt for W. But in a start where you have a laner that helps you a bit and allows you to basically clear the camp faster, you should go for the Q, just because the knockup gives you extra damage and the 3 to end strike technically just uh, exceeds the damage that you get from W. At level 2, basically the same concept applies, that you should either get Q or W, whichever you didn't get first. And at level 3, obviously for the gank, and to look for gank opportunities, you should go for the E. It will help like this basic basic concept of Sin Zhao is to do stuff early game and if you don't have like by all three spells at level three there's nothing you can do at level three that's just how it is and it basically applies for a lot of other junglers too you want to max Q first which is basically the strongest spell in this kit in my opinion because the CD reduction that you get by leveling up also applies to other spells so every point in it is just really gold um second it's kind of a discussion about it but i think due to the flattened ecd right now that e is not to be max second anymore which it used to be but now w becomes more attractive to him because you usually went for the e in order to ensure they have like fast combos every time and everything like that but now you don't need that anymore. you have the same combo speed every time because the ECD has been flattened. So the W spell, which gives you an inner crit on the third attack, as well as a, a nice boost of heal, is just something you should look out for, especially if you look to split push later on in the game. For Zin, Zin Zhao, there are 
two options to go with. Either you decide to go for the Devour, which basically gives you the nice stacking option in order to be mid to late game Swift Pusher, or you decide to go for the Synalk, which is basically making your team fight and someone that provides a lot of utility with his R and his Q and his gap closer and E in order to sit on the enemy backline and just be as annoying as he can be. I'm going to elaborate on Synalk first because I think it's the more approachable build for more situations and you should definitely start out and trying to Either go for the blue or red smite, depending on whether what, what your preference is, because blue smite kind of allows you to gain better, red smite allows you to do it better. So if you have a good knowledge of where the enemy jungle is at all times and you can kind of find them in the jungle, then you should go for the red smite and definitely trust your own abilities in that scenario. Whereas if you are really gank heavy and you want to be uh, following that style, then you should go for the blue smite just to ensure that your ganks are going to be more powerful and you may not even have to get close with the E initially before he flashes. So you can do some fancy where you blue smite the enemy, walk up to him, auto attack Q, and then as soon as he flashes, he E into him and he's still going to be slowed. So that is something that you just have to think about and see for yourself. In either way, you should path in Hulk and probably obtain early boot. Um, maybe even before finishing Sinhalk, just to ensure that your ganks are still going to be strong and you're not going to be as reliant on your gap closer as as uh, it is just something that is not to be used like initially on a gank in my opinion. You want to have the ideal situation for him is always to come from the side or come from behind, auto attack Q and then E after the flash or after the gap closer of the enemy has been used. So uh, just think about that. Um, after building Cinder Hulk and your initial boots, your tier 1 boots, you should probably upgrade your boots and there are three options for you. Either there is a swiftness boot just to ensure that you're going to be on the map 24 7 and you're going to be walking from lane to lane and trying to gank as much as possible, which kind of replaced the old mobility boots that used to be uh, the flavor of the month, technically. Um, for the teamfight options, there's also obviously the Ninja Tabai um, to just give you a nice boost of armor against 80 heavy comps or auto attack heavy comps, or the Merc Treads, which would probably bode well, especially with the 15% CDR that they already have in the defense tree. If that adds up, you're going to be up to 40%. And and it's gonna help you stay alive and fight in case the enemy is CC heavy. Beyond that, good armor items in my opinion are Randuin um, and Deadman's Blade. Both of these items really give you this little edge in terms of team fight ability and allow you to chase people down or keep people occupied, which Zinzao's kit is pretty good at. For magic resist options, um, you should obviously go for go for an early Spectre Scout or the Aegis that which builds into Locket just to give you an early boost of, of MR and maybe give you more team fight utility, especially when it comes to the Locket, which just makes your early to mid game transition, which is basically, in my opinion, where Zinzao falls off, uh, just a little bit more useful. So you're not going to fall down as hard, you're still going to be able to impact, impact your, uh, your team and impact the enemy team, uh, team comp in case they're MR heavy. Uh, for the Devour route, which is the more solid Kyrish route, you should definitely try to apply enough, a lot of pressure, even if you build it, because just building Devour doesn't mean that you shouldn't farm or you shouldn't be uh, doing any of that. Um, you should try to scale, obviously, you should try to like do whatever you want to, and but still still kind of still kind of um not not just like go autopilot and afk farm but rather like try to try to use the use the extra incentive to farm to maybe obtain a bit more items which can lead into more mid to late game split pushing which would be something that you could pursue for example after after the devour you could go for the rage patch which is obviously going to be the next patch so um you may not be able to see that anymore but offensive items that you could pursue if you want to do it a Triforce, the, the uh, Titanic Hydra, which is this really situational, um, especially if you're, if you're going to devour the HP pool of yours, it's going to be a bit lower, so it's not going to be as gold efficient, but in general, just Humus, Triforce, movement speed items that just give you this extra edge in terms of chasing people down and keeping them occupied. Thanks for watching this basic champion guide. Make sure to check out the rest of the guides over at lowclass.com.